if we can understand, which most of the I do not know. Uh, well, in seminars, in any case, people talk some complicated stuff. So uh, you you must have heard many talks on string theory already, or you might hear as you proceed along with time, people present things in a very complicated manner, and you don't know what is going on. But my approach is entirely different. I do it like I am doing it for a first year student. Okay. So we are at the first step. We have not yet gone to the first floor, not to talk of second or third floor. Okay. So we should know each and everything, why and how. And then we can make sense out of things. Okay. So <coughs> this is one thing. And now we want to know the, the reason behind it. Before I rub off, erase these diagrams, let me point out one thing that here all of these vertices are zero dimensional vertices. They are zero dimensional. Why? Because these particles are zero dimensional objects. Okay. So you have a vertex, wherever three word lines meet, one, two, three, one, two, three, any one, two, three, or one, two, three, any point where three word lines meet is a vertex, right? And each vertex has zero dimensions because each particle has zero dimensional. In conventional field theory, we do uh, so-called particle physics. Here, the particles are zero dimensional objects. You will say, what is the problem with zero dimensions of these particles? I tell you now, what is the problem? That is going to lead us to string theory. Okay. So I, I personally think that what I propose to talk in very first talk is this. Uh, I try to convince why you should do string theory, how it arises in a very natural fashion. Here, everything shown here on this uh, on this uh, board for all vertices, they are zero dimensional and it's particles with zero dimensions. Eventually, we would promote them to one dimensional objects and then these vertices would no longer be zero dimensional. Okay. And why would we do that? This is what I would like to resolve now. So can I erase some of this now from the center? Okay, very good. So but uh, using the conventional uh, using the conventional uh, field theory techniques of regularization, renormalization, etc. One can make a good sense for all these diagrams. One can find out the sensible results which will be compared with the experiment. Okay, and actually, all these diagrams there is nothing new. They were uh, they were studied long ago, and they up to several digits. Okay, they are they are verified up to several digits. All these diagrams. Okay, so <coughs> now this brings us to one another important point. Again, of m by m to y r square. These two very basic laws of physics, right? Very basic laws of physics. Now, what happens here if r goes to zero? If r goes to zero, the force blows up. These are the force, right? This is the force. So. This is the gravitational force and this is the electromagnetic force. If R goes to zero, then force blows up, right? But then still in my these diagrams, I happen to have zero dimensional vertices and they don't blow up. So what is the magic behind it? This magic is Heisenberg uncertainty. Very simple. So there is a singularity at r equal to zero. However, Mr. Werner Heisenberg comes to rescue. He comes to our help. He says, no, 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 no. Please, 
use my uncertainty principle. So, this uncertainty principle will smear out the singularity at r equal to 0. Okay? This uncertainty principle would smear out the singularity at r equal to 0 and therefore we will get sensible results okay which could be measured and could be compared with experiments right however here my uncertainty principle doesn't help me in the present form the way we know it for the conventional quantum mechanics field theory okay so it's it's the same okay quantum mechanics is zero space one time dimensional field theory what is quantum mechanics here things are coordinates and momenta they are functions of time whereas in electrodynamics for example they are functions of x y z and t so that is a field okay whereas in quantum mechanics it's just a function of time so this is a zero space and one time dimensional field theory quantum mechanics okay and here my uncertainty principle works for both of them i get sensible results because uncertainty principle is smears out the singularity at r equal to g but i don't have it for the gravity theory so if one particle is sitting on the top of the other the the, the gravitational force between them blows up and there is nobody to rescue mr heisenberg doesn't help you if you have zero dimensional objects of course, if you if you make them one dimensional objects, Mr. Heisenberg would be again happy to help you. Okay. So we would have some modified Heisenberg uncertainty principle for one dimensional objects, and then things would be okay. But unless you do that, so so but but then that would not be conventional field theory. That would be string theory. Okay. So in string theory, you would have sensible results for this transition amplitude, but with one dimensional object not with zero dimensional object that would be already string theory okay is that fine let me again remind matthews matthews and i let me forget lambert hmm? lambert lambert i must i must recollect i in, in delhi i'm used to memorizing many names because i have too many students in my class <laughs> sometimes parented uh, uh, not for field theory, but for quantum mechanics class, I have even 150 students sitting in front of me. So, uh, okay. So, I think you start getting some feel for what I am saying. That here, for gravity theory, 